For this lesson, we'll be going over zener diodes. Zener diodes are a two electrode semiconductor device that acts as a one way conductor in the forward bias condition and a voltage regulator in the reverse bias condition. So, what does this mean? They form and function just like a junction diode, which we talked about in a previous lesson. However, when running the reverse condition or reverse bias condition, reverse current, the zener diode acts as a voltage regulator. So this can be used down the line to step down voltage from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And we'll talk about that more in the later slides. Okay, in the previous slide, we talked about how the zener diode functions just like the junction diode, with a few exceptions. If you look at the illustrations below, in the forward bias condition, the zener diode does function just like a junction diode. The side does not change. However, if you look in the second illustration, in the reverse bias condition, the voltage drop across the diode is not zero. Instead, it's 5.1 volts for that particular diode because that's what the voltage uh, rating is for that diode. So anytime you run uh, the diode in reverse, whatever that rating is, that's what you're gonna have across that diode. Hence, if you have a load resistor in parallel with that diode, that's what the voltage across that resistor would be. Hence why some of your textbooks or some of your PE references will say VZ equals V out. Now, if you look in your, ref, uh, your FE reference handbook, you'll see the same equations for a junction diode as far as finding your uh, thermal voltage, uh, your current, and things like that. So I'm not going to go over that as much because it form and functions just like a uh, junction diode. Okay, the Zener diode application. As I kept repeating, I kept saying in the reverse bias condition, it acts as a voltage regulator. A voltage regulator is a circuit designed to maintain a constant output voltage with a relative input voltage. For example, this would almost mimic a DC-DC converter as shown below. It's just more in a crude or a more simplistic manner. So I have a picture of a DC-DC converter for a car. It goes to 12 volts to 5 volts. Well, in a sense, a Zener diode does the same application. It just doesn't have all the filters and other things with it to give you all the extra bells and whistles. It's just, in a sense, all it does is take a higher voltage and step it down to a lower voltage. That's basically all it does with the circuit that you're going to see uh, in some of our example problems. A very common parameter you're going to see with Zener diodes is power dissipation. The maximum steady state power dissipation rating is the maximum allowable average power dissipation for the Zener diode that is operating in the reverse breakdown condition. Okay, so when we, revert, when we uh, run or design a circuit using a Zener diode and we run it in the reverse bias condition, every diode has its own voltage rating as well as its own power dissipation rating. So it has a maximum, for example, in our graph below, it has a maximum of one watt power dissipation rating. Now, in every data sheet, there's a power derating factor, which we're gonna go over an exact uh, example problem. The power derating factor is the amount of maximum power dissipation that decreases when the operating temperature increases. And it's usually in a slope, as you can see in the illustration below. So as temperature increases, the uh, power dissipation will decrease. Now there's usually two formulas or a few formulas in your books, but we're gonna go over mainly two of them. Uh, power is obviously equal to current times voltage, but this one's going to be your zero diode voltage times your maximum zero diode current. And then obviously using algebra, we can find our maximum zero current with power over voltage. And we'll go over that in an example problem. Now, right now, what you're seeing is a power derating factor. These are all shown on data sheets and we're, and this is something you need to be familiar with when trying to figure out the calculations when temperature in correlation to power dissipation. And again, like I said, we'll go with this in an example problem just to get your feet wet in case you see one of these down the line. Just like we usually do, we start with a relatively easy problem. This one has one voltage source, one resistor, and one zero diode in its typical formation, which is the reverse bias formation. Okay, and for this problem, we need to find out how much power is dissipated by the zero diode. All right, this one is just using a little bit of Ohm's law just to find your answer, but we're gonna do it so that way you're aware of how things work. So we put a meter, across the 47 K ohm resistor. And that gave us 21 volts. So the first thing we can find is our current. So like simple Ohm's law, I equals V over R, which is 21 volts over 47 kilo ohms. Okay, 
So that will tell us current going that direction. And plug and chug in our calculator. It's going to give us an answer of 4.468 times 10 to negative 4 amps. Now that we have our current, we should be able to find our power. So we're looking for PD. Well, looking to the right, power dissipated equals the current times the voltage. Very simple. It's like, like I said, it's our common ohm's law. Well, we know the voltage across the Zener diode because it's 5 volts stated right there. So that would equal your Zener voltage. PD equals 4.468 times 10 to negative 4 times 5 volts. Okay. Plug and chug in our calculator is going to give us an answer of 2.234 times 10 to negative 3 watts, which is, eh, we'll round, 2.23 milliwatts. So that will be our final answer. Very simple problem. All right, let's go on and do another one. All right, so we have another power dissipation problem. How much power is being dissipated by the Zener diode? And the Zener diode voltage rating is 12 volts. Okay, so just to make it easy on us, I'll put 12 volts right there. So what this means is if I put a meter between this point and this point, it should read approximately 12 volts, which means this resistor is going to have to eat the remaining voltage from the voltage source. So... Let's start doing our math little by little to see if we can find the power dissipation. The first thing we can do is find total current, which would be ideal. Let's go ahead and find IT. Well, let's see, we got room right here. IT equals, because the current flowing through this resistor is the current flowing through the whole circuit. That's pretty obvious, right? So it's going to be VN minus VZ, which is our... Um, our Zener diode voltage, this right here, because we're just trying to find the current going through the 1 cam resistor. So if we find the voltage drop on the 1 cam resistor, we could find the current throughout the whole circuit, just using Ohm's law. So Vn minus Vz, 12 volts, over the resistor, which I'll say is the source resistor. And we'll go ahead and see if we put some values in there. So I have 18 volts from our power supply right there minus 12 volts over 1k ohms. Okay, so that's going to be 6 volts over 1k. It's going to give us an answer of, plug and jug in our calculator, approximately 6 milliamps. Now that we've found total current, let's see if we can find the current going through our load resistor, which is our 10k ohm resistor right here say this is the current going through the load resistor, so IL equals, this is going to be V over R. Now, since this resistor is in parallel with that zero diode, it's going to be 12 volts, because if there's 12 volts here, it's 12 volts here. Very simple. 12 volts over 10K. And once we plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us an answer of 1.2 milliamps. So we have total current, we have the current flowing through this branch. Now we want to find the current flowing through the Zener diode branch, which is IZ. Well, this is simple using basic math. IT, which is your total current, equals IZ, which is the current going through your Zener diode, plus your current going through your load. That's pretty simple. Well, we know this one is 6 milliamps. That's unknown, plus 1.2 milliamps. And once we do the math, IZ equals 4.8 milliamps. So now we have our current going through our diode. Very simple. So we have IZ, we have VZ, and now we can find our power. So same as last time, PD equals IZ times VZ, which equals 4.8 milliamps times 12 volts. It's going to give us a final answer of 
zero point zero five seven six watts, which comes out to be fifty seven point six milliwatts. And that is our final answer for power dissipated through that Zener diode. Do one more since I saved the best for last. All right, I think I saved the best for last. A Zener diode with a power dissipation maximum rating of one watt has a derating factor of five milliwatts per degree Celsius, and this is above 50 degrees Celsius. What is the maximum power dissipation at 120 degrees Celsius? Well, I put a graph here just to supply a visual representation of how this is gonna look. All right, so about half of that is 60, and about half of that is 50. So right here, approximately, this is just approximate, we don't have to go detailed yet, 50 degrees Celsius. So we know it's gonna stay at one watt until we hit 50 degrees. So right here, it's gonna be a thick line right here. And that's one degree, and uh, excuse me, and that's one watt at 50 degrees Celsius. And then it's gonna start derating at five milliwatts per degrees. So it's gonna start sloping down similar to what you saw in the slides. But we wanna find out what the power dissipation is at 120 degrees. So we wanna know when it, interse when it intersects this 120 degrees, what's the power dissipation? In other words, this is PD and this is temperature, which is in degrees Celsius. Sorry, I didn't put my units there earlier. Well, the way to approach this is we need to find the difference between when it starts sloping to where you wanna be. Because right now it doesn't start sloping until you hit 50 degrees Celsius. Because if we actually did like 120 degrees and started doing the slope intercept form, it would not look well. Anytime you see this derating factor, that is your slope. That is your, uh, your M for your slope intercept form. So in later problems, you can use the slope intercept form to find some of your answers. Okay, so I need to find what the difference is between 120 and 150. So we wanna know what the actual temperature is. And that's gonna equal 120 degrees Celsius minus 50 degrees Celsius, because it doesn't start derating until after that. So 120 minus 50, equals 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, with me so far. Now we can multiply our temperature times our derating factor. So it's gonna be x equals, and we could say five milliwatts per, per degree Celsius multiplied 70 degrees Celsius. It's gonna give us x of 0 0.35 watts. Now, some of your practice problems, they may actually have that as the answer. That is not the answer. This right here is the power dissipation loss. That's not the actual maximum power dissipation at that temperature. So to find your answer, you determine your power dissipation, which is one watt, minus the amount you lost. Because since you dropped 70 degrees, this is how much you've lost, which is 0 0.35 watts. Make sense? And give us a final answer of... 0 0.65 watts. So at 120 degrees, it's gonna be close to about right there. So when it slopes, I was, my uh, dots were a little bit off. So when it slopes, it's gonna be something that looks like that. Is that your maximum power? That's how much it derated. So you have to subtract the two. Now let's look at this from a separate point of view. Let me clear all this out real quick. Okay, so let's just say you wanna work the other way around or you wanna actually do more with this problem. Like for example, let's just say they give you power dissipation but not temperature. Well, this is where your slope intercept form really comes in handy. So Y equals MX plus B. Well, I already told you your slope right there is uh, five milliwatts per degree. Now be advised, look at the slope direction. It's going to the right which means in a sense, that's a negative five milliwatts. Advise, that's how your slope would actually be because it's going in a down slope. Now, let's just say I gave you a power dissipation of 0.5. Like I say, hey, find me the temperature of PD equals 0.5 watts. Find me the temp. What's the temperature? Okay, so I know my Y, but I don't know my X. And I also don't know my Y intercept. So let's find that first. Well, the one thing is given with great detail and accuracy is 
we are at one watt at 50 degrees Celsius. So right there, we know exactly our Y and our X with extreme accuracy. So we know our Y is one watt, now let's say we'll put W there, equals, we know our slope, which is negative five milliwatts per degrees, put parentheses around it, make it easy, times, we know our X, which is 50, and then plus B. Well, plug and chug in that in our calculator, one watt, and that one should be a negative point two five plus B. Now obviously just do a little simple math. B would equal 1.25 watts. That would be your y-intercept right there. So after this, we can plug and chug the rest of this in a calculator very easily. Going back to y equals mx plus b, well, we have our y, which is 0.5 watts, so it's 0 0.5 watts, equals mx, well, I know m, it's negative 5 milliwatts per degree Celsius, and I'll put parentheses around that. I do not know x yet, because that's what I'm looking for, plus b, which is 1.25. That's watts. Okay. Well, this is very simple. So using our, hmm, tell you what. Uh, tell you what, just to save myself space, I'm going to move this real quick. Go ahead and subtract the 1.25, which is going to give us a negative 0 0.75 watts equals 5 milliwatts per degree Celsius times X, okay? And all we have to do now is divide each side by negative five milliwatts. That's gonna give us an answer of X equals 150 degrees. So if I kept this slope going, 150 degrees is about right there. So, oh, my line's not too far off, right there. If I give you power dissipation, you'll be able to find temperature just by using slope intercept form. Very simple. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, you got enough information here to make you dangerous.